Hello and welcome to another session of TMYS Academy, where we're working towards building a digital knowledge bank of global thought leaders. Today we have with us Professor Ryan Amal Amilkar Scott, who is an American short story writer and essayist. He teaches creative writing at the University of Maryland. His short story collection, The World Doesn't Require You, was a finalist for the Penn Jean Stein Book Award. His debut short story collection, Insurrections, was awarded the 2017 Penn Bingham Prize for debut fiction and the 2017 Hillsdale Award from the Fellowship of Southern Writers. One of his short stories was listed as a notable in the Best American Stories 2018, and an essay of his was listed as a notable in the Best American Essays 2015. His most recent honors include the Maryland Individual Artists Award in 2019, the 2020 Towson Prize for Literature, um, and you can read some of his works on platforms and journals such as the New Yorker, the Kenyan Review, Crab Orchard Review, the Rumpus, and others. Um, a little bit about myself. My name is Ritambhara. I'm your moderator for today. Some of my interests include children's literature, translation, the intersection of text and images, the text and music. And before I go to graduate school in a year or two, I'm doing a capstone thesis on water in Amrza Patel's graphic novels under Professor Jonathan Gil Harris. Now, Professor, without further ado, let's get started. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for, thank you for having me and thank you for that wonderful introduction. A small correction, it's actually Rian, not Ryan. Oh, I'm so sorry. I will keep that in mind. Um, okay, so my first question to you, Professor, is about um, your short story that I really enjoyed, Shape Up at Delilah's. Shape Ups at Delilah's. So uh, I wanted to talk about hair and hair as a marker of identity. So cultural, racial, and personal identity. So the way one presents their hair is very strong expression of who they are and who they want to be. And hair has also been a basis for discrimination for so long. And now, thankfully, after so long, there have been conversations and laws against the discrimination. So I was wondering what might have led you to write about the great hair crisis in Shape Ups at Delilah's. Uh, and not to say that the story, that this short story wasn't funny and delightful as it is, but I wanted to know what you thought while you were making the crisis a hair crisis. Yeah, um, I, I think hair in, uh, in black culture, um, in, black, in black American culture, um, probably worldwide, has always been it's always been fraught. Yeah, I mean, definitely worldwide. Um, it, it's always been fraught, and there's always, you know, there's always been this, uh, you know, this impulse, especially among women um, in uh, straightening, black women straightening hair. Um, and, uh, and and there's a, you know, equally uh, strong pushback movement in, in terms of, of natural hair that has been going on long, long before I was, uh, before I was born. So um, it, it, there's a lot of tension there. So it's, it's a good place to, to set, to set a story. Um, for a lot of black men in America, the, the barbershop is like this, is, is, is almost like considered this like holy place. <laughs> uh, and it has a, uh, you know, there's, 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 there's reverence for it. Um, you, you find a barber, you stick with them. It's almost like a, it's almost like a, um, a, a romantic relationship and go to a different barber. You feel like you're, <laughs> like, you're like you're cheating on, on that barber. Um, but, you know, I, I, so I was trying, you know, I was trying to think through the, think through the issues of, of, of what that space means. And uh, so this story is part of a cycle of stories. In my first book, there was a story called uh, Razor Bumps, uh, in which I in introduced the hair crisis. And, um, you know, I think, I think what, what, you know, what, what, what inspired that was, you know, I think a lot of, it's a very common experience that a lot of people have um, uh, barbers who, who uh, their, their skills decline. And uh, you stay with them because that, that that's you, you've been with that person for 10, 20 years, <laughs> even even as their even as their skills decline. So that's that's kind of how I started the um, started the the you know it was, it was sort of a metaphor for that. But then you know it became the, the, this larger thing, um, looking at um, sort of comparing that to some of the troubles that um, th that we we've had in in uh, in, uh, in in black society in that in that first. In that first uh, story, and in the second one, I was the you know I was uh, you know I continued and I I, didn't, I don't know if I ever when I wrote the first one I don't think I ever thought about hey I'm going to return to the hair crisis return to that but um yeah you know I had I had moved I found a new barber um and then it was a, it was a female barber and she was probably the best barber I ever had in my life and uh, it, it started making me think about 
um, as a child, you know, we had the, you know, we had, um, you know, it was, you know, the, the, the space of the, of the black barbershop, again, is, is very masculine. Um, and it's, and, and it's, uh, and, and it can tip over into, into sexist, um, thinking and we all you know the, the whole idea there was this whole idea women women can't cut hair oh you let a woman cut your hair um and and i started thinking about how you know ridiculously magical in in, in a hard in a bad way um that 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 idea um is um and um you know and, and here here was proof you know as a you know great great barber um that um you know 20 years previous you know a, a lot of people would just uh, would just ignore mm -hmm. Uh, thank you for sharing that with us, Professor. That's really interesting. And uh, that tenderness and beauty of the relationship really translated itself very well on paper uh, or the screen uh, when I was reading it. And um, we will get to recurring themes in your works in a short while. But before we move on, I want to talk a little bit more about this um, story. And uh, I wanted to ask, now that we're living through a pan world crisis, the pandemic, do you find yourself going back to the story? Has it um, changed your relationship with the story? And how is it different to write about a crisis and actually live through something like this? Yeah, I mean, when I was writing it, it was, uh, you know, it's all theoretical, you know, it's, it's all theoretical, it's all fun and games. Um, you know, so it, you can you can make a, you know, jokes about it. But in, um, in the real world, you know, this is heroin, you know? You know, it's uh, you know, it's a uh, you know, it's just day by day it gets it, it gets worse. Um, you know, and I think my country's handling it worse than than most. Um, and um, you know, I was I was thinking the other day how you know, when I had started writing something, I started writing like a novel to, to, that that sort of you know touched on you know themes about the pandemic. Um, and it was sort of satirical. And it didn't go anywhere because you know my emotions about it are not uh, are you know are not resolved. I'm still going through it. Um, so many things, so many ideas that I thought were humorous in the beginning is no longer funny. You know, um, um, even even in a uh, even in a, in a in a darkly satirical way, they're just you know it's um, you know going through it is uh, you know it's, you know it, it, it's tough. Um, and it, you know it's, it's interesting that I think that so many like. So many people, my mo you know, my mother lived an entire life and never had to deal with anything like this, um, you know, um, and it's, it, it's a, you know, so it's a once in a generation, once in a generation curse. Um, and, uh, and, and we have the misfortune of being, of being that, that generation. And, um, and anything comparable, um, most of those people who, who went through it are not, uh, not alive. <laughs> um, yeah. You know. I was lament that I didn't get a chance to ask my grandmother about the um, the uh, the pandemic of 1918 um, and how how she how she did that within and why would I ask her that you know <laughs> um, so um, yeah so I I didn't necessarily think of it as uh, in the um, in uh, you know I guess I, I guess you could call it a uh, an epidemic or uh, the great hair crisis an epidemic or pandemic or, uh, but i didn't think of it in in, in those terms you know um and uh, i guess i still don't <laughs> okay that's fair uh, it just um, seemed like a crisis to me because i've never gotten a good haircut every time i get, get every time <laughs> i get a haircut it's always bad and then i feel um, terrible it almost feels like a crisis to me i don't go to school for the next 3 days um, but anyway <laughs> For the people, in, for the people in my fictional town, it, it you know it it is a crisis. It is it's like that you know, it's, and, and it's something that they have to have to live through. So um, you know, I do intend to, to to write about it again. And your your question made me think about it uh, in a, in a different way. When I read when you sent me the question and I read and I looked at it, I thought you know oh, yeah, this is going to inform inform the, the next and and probably final final great hair crisis story. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm really glad about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, Professor, my next question to you um, is, is about the skepticism you said you faced about writing female characters. Um, but a writer is always writing characters that don't derive from their own, own identities. Um, so, I mean, eventually you say that with two or two checkmates, that skepticism sort of went away. But uh, I still want to discuss... Uh, when you think it becomes problematic, if at all, uh, to write about something you're not, 
And uh, could you basically uh, perhaps talk a little bit about the burdens and uh, protocols of representation as you perceive them? Yeah, I wouldn't call it skepticism. Um, it was. It wasn't really skepticism. It was. Uh, it was. I was learning, and it was sort of, sort of a lack of lack of ability, lack of skill. Um, and uh, you know, it was sort of you know, uh, I, I was sort of a. Uh, I didn't know how how to approach it, and, and writing this story gave me the opportunity um, to, to to figure out how to approach it. Um, and one of the things that I, I understood um, is that you know. You know, fiction can't exist without writing difference, you know? I saw somebody tweet the other day that white, white men should no longer write characters of color. I thought it was the most ridiculous thing. And I, was, and I, saw, and I immediately thought, this person must not be a fiction writer. Um, but um, I, think, um, I think it becomes problematic when you're not really thinking of the thinking of how other people experience the world based on their... Um, based on their um their identity or if you're thinking about or or if you've considered it but you've considered it in a sort of stereotypical way um i think you 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 know for me i usually start with you know what are the commonalities um you know when i when i wrote that story in terms of two checkings i thought of you know what what was what is this character how is this character like like uh like i was at this at this age um and then i started thinking of you know how was that different how are those how are those things the, those goals what those things that they wanted how did, how was it different trying to achieve those goals based on based on a, a you know a difference in gender um and so you know i think uh alexander chi um has a great essay on this i, I can't remember where where it's published but um if you if you google alexander chi and writing the other or something like that you'll probably come along come come to it and he he talks about you know things that you have to keep in mind when looking at um, looking at other other um, when you're writing other cultures. You know, are you reading widely in the cultures? One of them. Um, you know, um, uh, why are you why are you writing why are you writing this story? Um, so you, I think you really have to give it give it um, a, a lot of consideration. You know, take it very seriously before you before you even before you even start, and then and then get into it. Right. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's uh, good advice. Uh, many of the people who watch our videos are aspiring um, writers. I think uh, it could really help us all. Uh, so thanks. And um, so we were talking about two, two checkmates and uh, it's a delightful story. And um, the, the family in the story makes a comeback in uh, your story called Confirmation. And mm -hmm. um, your, your writing, your body of work, as I've noticed, has uh, a couple of recurring themes. There are wolves, there are parents and parenthood, there's God and religion, to name a few. But what I find especially intriguing in your body of work is that um, characters, uh, like I mentioned, make a comeback in other stories. It's sort of mm -hmm. like a continuation, uh, if not a sequel. And um, that's something that's kind of unheard of in the short story form. So how did this come to be? And uh, what are some interventions that you make in the short story form? Yeah, I don't know if it's unheard of. You know, Edward, Edward P. Jones is, is famous for his his collections. Uh, they line up perfectly, and uh, if you read them together, um, you know, like the first story in the first collection is dealing with the same characters in the second story, and on and on. If you read them together, um, yeah, you know, I read them together, and just it felt like this whole world had had opened up around me, um, and it felt it almost felt like he had created a new genre. Um, and and there there are other examples of that. So it's not like an innovation that that I that I brought to the brought to the game. But um, I, you know, my main character is not any of these characters. My main character is the town that I invented, Cross River. Um, so I think of, you know, I, I, you know, I'm always starting with with the town. That's not necessarily true, but you know, I, I might start with a character, but the town is is um, the, around them is um, is is uh, is incredibly important, and there's certain things that that are. Um, you know, there's, there's a certain culture that is sort of built up over over my over my now I don't know fifteen or so years of writing uh, writing cross river stories. Um, you know, even failed stories that have never never come out. You know, there's some you know I might have created something a structure um, and and, uh, and yeah that you know this story doesn't work, but that structure is interesting. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it bring it out. Um, and so um, so yeah, it's not easy to bring a character back. And because um you know I tend to think of stories as um 
the definitive moment in this person's life. Um, so, um, you know, so if you, if you think of it that way, you know, if you think of using the word the definitive, not a definitive, um, then there's no reason for a character to come back. Um, so, um, so, my, so I often find my characters come back in, you know, they come back in different ways. For instance, um, that's those stories that you talked about in 202 Checkmates and Confirmation, um, the main character of, 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 of 202 Checkmates is a very minor character in Confirmation. And, and the father um, plays a, a pivotal role in both stories, but his, his, his presence in both stories uh, uh, is, 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 much, is much different. Um, and so, um, so yeah, so I think of, you know, I think of this town, Cross River, um, it has its own particular history. It was founded after a slave revolt uh, in, uh, in, in, in Southern United States. And, and um, it, 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 you know, uh, it's a sandbox that I can play, play with, you know? You know, once I've written something, you know, those characters, those buildings, those streets, um, you know, those cultural phenomenons like, uh, like the great hair crisis, they become sort of uh, touchstones that I, can, that, I can ref that I can go back to. Yeah, I was actually thinking a lot about spaces and spatiality uh, when I was reading your stories, especially uh, after I read um, some stories that featured Cross River. So uh, I was thinking, you know, how that city was birthed in your, in your um, stories. And it was definitely not because there aren't enough cities in the world or anything. There are. But, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. But um, the history of the place is what makes it interesting. So for those who don't know, Cross River was um, founded in the established rather in the 1800s after the successful, the only successful slave rebellion. So uh, I was, I wanted to know what you think about um, the rootedness um, in fiction, basically how rooted does one's writing have to be in reality, even when it's fictional or, you know, say in time. And uh, do you feel any sort of disconnect with writers from say a decade ago? Or... Um, so, uh, you know, rootedness, um, you know, I feel like, you know, all the, all the elements, you know, the setting and character, um, you know, you know, I, I, I think those all, you know, those elements haven't been, haven't been, uh, transcended <laughs> or, or defeated it yet. You know, I think it, um, so I, you know, I, I think you sort of have to reckon with it and creating Cross River was sort of, um, it sort of corrected a problem that I had, you know, I think that, you know, setting is, was, was, was probably one of the weakest things that, um, weakest parts of my, um, my craft. Um, and, um, you know, I recognize it as such. Um, and I, I wouldn't say that I created crossover consciously to, 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 um, to address that, but it did, you know, it did address that. I couldn't, I could no longer ignore setting. Um, and I think that, you know, for me personally, I think that you, you're, um, each element, each each craft element that you're, um, that, 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 you know, you don't necessarily have to be a master of every craft element to be a master of fiction. You know, I, I think a, a lot of times creating great work is going towards the stuff that you that you are are good at. You know, and uh, uh, and you know, there's certain things that that I'm um, that aren't necessarily my forte. Um, so there's not a lot of it in, in my writing. But if I need that element, I'm gonna reach. To, I'm gonna you know spend some extra time and focus on that on that element. But, um, you know, so, 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 yeah, so, so I think that, um, you know, writers need to figure out, you know, in each particular story, what, um, you know, which, um, which elements, uh, you know, whether it be setting or character, which element is absolutely is necessary um, for the story you're telling. Uh, and when I thought of creating um, th this town, you know, I always knew that my work would be sort of, uh, you know, related to history and history based because, uh, you know, that, that's always on my mind. Um, and so, um, you know, history, um, you know, is, is, and geography, are, you know, are, are, are very closely tied together. So I needed that, I needed that element if I, you know, for my, um, for, for my, for my, for whatever I was going to write in the future. Um, so, you know, I don't think I necessarily feel disconnected from any, any particular um, writers of, of any particular time. Um, you know, I, you know, I, I, I um, you know, like a lot of writers, I, you know, it's, uh, I like going back and figuring out and, and looking at what I've, what I've missed, um, you know, and I'm, and I'm not a, um, you know, as a scholar, I'm not an expert on any particular, um, particular time um, in literature. Um, 
I'm, I'm not sure. Did I answer all, all, all the? <laughs> yes, you did. Uh, all parts did of the you question. Satisfactorily, so no, thank you. Yeah, um, Professor, since we were talking about these elements, uh, I reckon that as a professor of creative writing, the, these are conversations that you keep having with your students. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know how being a teacher impacts your writing, and in turn, how does being a writer um, affect your relationship to people, spaces, and politics? Um, my students are, are, um, are, are very often, are very often, um, I learn a lot from students. And, and I think that if you are, um, if you're teaching well, then you're learning a lot from your students, you know, um, you know, I'm thinking of discussions that my students are having now on the discussion board, you know, something that just blows my mind. It's like, at the, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I never considered that element or that part of a story or, 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 you know, there's always things that I haven't considered. Um, so, um, so yeah, I, you know, I, I get a lot, you know, I, you know, and I, you know, I think about, think about whatever I'm teaching and, um, you know, and, and creating, you know, a structure that, that I'm going through the semester or going through a particular lesson. Um, I'm always surprised at, you know, what particular points I'm getting something back um, and something I can learn, something I can, I can take and use in, in my, in my own work. Um, um, and, and being a writer, you, you said how it affects what, uh, politics and what, what's, what are the other things you said? Your relationships with people and spaces, I think you've already spoken about, so. Yeah, um, my relationship with people, writing, <laughs> writing, writing, writing can be very solitary, so it's, it, it's, uh, so that, the you know, that, you know, you, you, you go off and you go off into the world and sometimes I, 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 for, I for, you know, I come out and I forget how to, how to even engage with people. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I, you know, but I think that, um, you know, when I talk to people about my work, you know, I, I again, you know, um, you know, my, my work is smarter than me. Um, most people's work is smarter than, than them and readers are smarter than, uh, than, than most writers because they will come and say, you know, I noticed this in your work and noticed that. And it's things that, that, uh, you know, you might, you know, like, oh, wow, I didn't, I didn't think about that. I didn't intend that, but it's there. Um, so, um, and, you know, and, you know, in terms of politics, you know, you know, I, I think I, I have to, um, you know, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm starting with character. I'm starting with um, story. Um, but, you know, I can't deny that those elements, those elements have, have political dimensions, because of course they do. Um, so I really have, you know, it, it, it really forces me to think about things that I don't know if I would, I would consider, um, if I wasn't, uh, if I wasn't trying to make sure that I'm not reinforcing bad ideas in, in, in my work. You know, when I, you know, when I'm writing a draft, you know, I, I write the draft with the characters and doing this and that. Um, and then I go through and I see what's there, you know, what am I going to play up? What am I going to play down? You know, what is it saying? Um, and, you know, is, is it saying something that I can, that I can live with something I can understand something that, that, that I can agree with? Um, you know, yeah, I have to take into account that I'm going to evolve, um, you know, 10 years from now, you know, um, maybe I'm a uh, ten years from now. Maybe I'm a a, 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 a conservative. <laughs> Probably not. But um, you know, I always have to think about you know is you know how is is what I'm writing um, gonna 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 be gonna be am I gonna judge myself harshly for for what I'm writing, um, which is unknowable. Um, but um, the, the, you got some inclination. That's such a beautiful thought. Yeah. That's Quite interesting. Uh, and uh, speaking of politics, um, I wanted to mention that um, while I was reading your essays, um, so I think one of them was called Other Outrages and uh, Other Deaths, uh, and mm -hmm. A Good Guy with a Gun, or The Frank Castle Doctrine, or The Punisher Applies for a New Job in the Wake of uh, Punisher Applies for a New Job. So when I was reading these in the wake of uh, the Black Lives Matter movement uh, this year, uh, I thought it was particularly insightful and moving. And um, reading your stories also, they're so deeply embedded in uh, Black culture. It prompted mm -hmm. me to think about um, the relationship between uh, writing and rebellion and um, writing and justice. And in so many ways, a writer is also a uh, judge, right? Like a writer's uh, poetic justice, for example. So where do you place writers in the grand scheme of things? Grand. Um, yeah, um, 
you know, I always feel like artists, um, like when I wrote that, that, that humor piece, um, it was, you know, the Frank Castle one, that's, that's a humor piece about, um, the, the, um, the Marvel character, the Punisher, getting a job as a teacher. Um, and that was a response to, um, you know, we, ha we have all these mass shootings um, that, that our politicians refuse to do anything about. Um, and, um, and so I, I, when I wrote that, you know, and I wrote it, um, you know, writers have this unrealistic sense that, you know, you, you, you write something like that and, you know, it's like, oh, is it still happening? I, I wrote something that, <laughs> that should have ended mass, you know, a mass shooting. And it's it's an un, 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 it's irrational, you know. I, I'm simplifying it, but it's a, it's a, it's a it's, it's a completely irrational thought because your work is not gonna, um, it's it's not going to end whatever societal, um, thing that you are um that you're writing about. Um, but you still, but we still need to, uh, still need to to address these things, right? Um, we still need to um, uh, um to say um to to say whatever it needs to be needs to be said about these about these particular topics um because um I, I think a writing is is very serious you know i think of art is very serious you know i think mo most people who are seriously engaged with art define themselves by uh, in part by um the the art they they consume you know i'd be i'd be a different person um if, if i was you know raised in a different generation and um w without without w without hip hop um and you know i, I define myself um, by a lot of the things that I, that I grew up uh, grew up listening to, I define myself by a lot of things that I that I've read. I would be a much different person if I never read Sula um, by, by Toni Morrison. Um, so I think of 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 of, of my work. Um, you know, people are going to take your work seriously, uh, and uh, and so um, and people are going to do something with it. Um, you know, and you know, we, there's no there's no telling what they're going to do with it. <laughs> you know, it might be something horrible, unfortunately. Um, but, um, so in, in the grand scheme of things, um, we're sort of helping people define their world for them. And that, and that's a very serious, and I take that as a very serious and sacred, sacred duty. Um, whether I am writing something silly and, and, and fun, you know, from, um, or if I, if I sit down and, and write a, a, a whimsical child, a children's poem, um, that might even be more serious than writing a, a serious, a serious essay um because those kids are, are more malleable mm -hmm. um so um so yeah um you know, I, I as i said before you know writing is you know is fiction or not fiction literature or writing and art you're you're helping people do, uh, you know helping to create an emotional and intellectual lexicon um giving people the words and um and and feelings um to to address this you know this 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 wide and dangerous um and scary world um you know um i had a point i can't i, I can't remember what i was gonna make no uh that's all right i think you've given us uh, plenty to chew on anyway uh there's a lot to think about uh both in your work and from the session i'm sure people will derive a lot out of this uh, i remember what i was gonna say okay, i remember what I was gonna say. Yeah. You know, a lot of times when people read something and they'll say, Oh, that you know, that's that's so depressing, you know. Um, but the thing is it's 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 like inoculation, you know, it's like you're giving somebody, you know, and it, if, if you turn away it, you're you're giving people the um you're giving people the, the, the poison, the sadness, you know, like you write a story that you know that's dealing with dealing with sadness. You you're you're you 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 experience that a little bit, you know, in a safe, controlled environment. You experience that. So when you experience it in real life, when you can't turn away, um, you have you have the uh, you have it there. Um, you have the the emotional scaffolding to be able to build to, to build up something on your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's really true. And uh, especially, I do see that in a lot of your writing. Um, so you give really. Uh, I should say micro doses of violence and uh, pain and you know really um, difficult emotions I'd say mm -hmm. you give them in uh, like very small doses so that they're ultimately like uh, I don't want to say palatable but I guess like they do provide some food for thought and uh, they're easier to take in than uh, most people would imagine or say you know in, in a documentary form or in a um, news mm -hmm. article form so uh, thank you for that. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Professor. This was a brilliant session. I had 
a great time interacting with you. Yeah, I mean, I mean as well. Thank you for having me.